Why don't you guys give it up for Life Point Family Comedy Night and Chris Roop? What is going on? That's it. This is it. We're trying something crazy here. Welcome. Thank you guys for being part of this. Uh, we got a live audience. We got a Zoom audience. I can see several people. How you doing, Miss Sonia? I see you out there. She's waving, so that's working. That's good. Uh, I see Bob Rauscher. He's actually in the building. Bob, how you doing? You looking good? You can wave. Um, okay, don't wave. You just keep looking crazy like that. Uh, so we got all kind of people that are either on Zoom. That's going to be kind of our Zoom audience, and we got people in the room that are being audience. You guys want to say something a little loud here? Give it up. All right. It's our live audience. So it's going to be fun. We're going to see how this goes out. So a couple things I want you guys to help me with. Even if you're on Zoom and you have the ability, um, I see you there, Alicia. How you doing? Um, yeah, yeah, I see you. So if you guys want to do something, even if you're on Zoom, if you're in the room, go ahead and pull up on your phones the, this, the show and share it so that other people, other your friends will see it. Let's share this and see if we can kind of get a little group going to watch this comedy show. So do that, okay? So go ahead and share that. Number two, here's a crazy thing I want you to do. Here's how this is going to work. This is craziness. We have two comedians. This is their first live performance in person in about six to eight weeks. Isn't that crazy? Six to eight weeks, and this is their first one. These guys aren't uh, able to make their normal living. So what we decided to do, and it's going to look a little crazy, but Jared, if you would throw up the little link I want you to send, uh, if you would consider making a donation or a tip, or maybe we'll just call it, if you'd like to buy a ticket, you can do that through paypal.me slash chrisroop. Now, I know that's weird because it's got my name like I'm going to receive it. I am going to receive it, but I'm going to pass it on. Uh, it was just the only way I could figure out how to do it. Paypal.com slash chrisroop. Paypal.me slash chrisroop. And the reason for that is um, you can tip or give on there. They have it set up where you can easily do it. Now, there, it's the easiest one I could find. There is one little little hiccup that's going to happen. When you go to that link, it, if you don't have a PayPal account, it wants you to create one so you can give. But you can create it, give, and then delete it. So help out. These guys, this is uh, what they do for a living. They haven't worked in quite some time as far as out like this. So let's support them by making a donation. Listen, at least $1, right? That's like the bottom. Some of you guys would buy a ticket. What would you pay for a ticket? $5? Then maybe five dollars. Some of you can do more than that to help these guys out by making a donation and tipping these guys. So make sure you take advantage of that as well. All right? Everybody good with that? Everybody good? All right. How about you, Zoom audience? Y'all can respond. We, you're right in front of us on a giant screen. So we see you, Bobby Wright, Dee Dee. I see you. Scott's hiding over there. I see you. So make sure you respond. You can wave. That could be y'all's little laughter button. Is just wave to the guys. Let them know that you. You're liking what they're doing. Appreciate you guys doing that as well. All right. So um, this has been weird. We've got the COVID thing going on, right? It's been bizarre. I'm not going to lie to you. What do you think is going to disappear when this is all over with? I've got, I've got some projections. These are my observations for anybody that cares. I have things, what I call commentary. I do commentary. I comment on things that I think about. All right. So I'm thinking what is going to disappear when this whole COVID thing's over with? And here's what I've determined handshaking is gone. It's going to disappear. And I'm okay with it because it's a weird tradition. Why are we shaking? I mean, I said, hey to you, why do I need to touch you as well? Right? Hey, how you doing? That should be good enough. I don't need a second engagement, right? Mm -hmm. oh, is that fair? Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. That's going to disappear. Where did it come from? Why are we even shaking hands to begin with? Did you know 5th century BC in Greece, they did that to show that there were no weapons in their hands. You see? So we can get rid of it. There's no weapons. We don't have to prove the way. I, I think 21st century, we're not killing each other when we shake hands, right? So we're going to get rid of that. Now here's what's going to make come back. Handshaking gone, what's coming in? What's going to be the new thing? Face mask. That's going to be the new thing. I know. Some of you guys hate it. It's just, you know, it was about four or five weeks ago, right? Four or five weeks ago, this country was unified. We were going to beat the coronavirus. Y'all remember that? Yeah. It's coronavirus is going to end. Now, according to the experts on social media, all the social media people, if you wear a mask, if you don't wear a mask, excuse me, if you don't wear a mask, you're a mass murderer. 
if you wear a mask, you don't. You if you if you don't wear a mask. I'm getting this all backwards now. <laughs> if you don't wear it, you're a murderer. If you do wear it, you don't believe in Jesus. You don't trust him. You don't believe in the Constitution. You don't believe in freedom, right? I'm just saying there might be a middle ground somewhere. There might be something. Maybe it's not as bad as all of that, right? There has to be a middle ground. I've kind of come up with this middle ground. Let's agree on this, will we? Let's agree. If you're going to wear a mask... Wear the mask, right? I'm not going to say who did this, but I was watching a video. I got, I got one of my masks here. I got two. I'm going to show you that one. Oh, yeah. So last week, we had a big event here at the church. I'm not going to say who it was, but at this <laughs> Mother's Day parade, there was somebody that was helping at the Mother's Day parade. It might have been the lead pastor, but I don't know for a fact. <laughs> and he was doing this right here. I'm just saying, I think he missed the most important part of the mask, you know. It's the covering of the mouth and the nose. If we're going to wear it, can we all agree that you've got to cover your mouth? He's not the only one who's done it. I don't want to throw him under the bus because there's other weirdos out there who, who are helping people. Hey, if you're a mass murderer for not wearing a mask, that's involuntary manslaughter. That's all I'm saying. You've kind of got it on, not all the way on, right? Yeah, and here's the thing about involuntary manslaughter. I was thinking about this when I was writing this joke. I have side thoughts, too, commentaries. So I was writing this joke. I thought about manslaughter. Seems like that's backwards, doesn't it? Murder, manslaughter. If you slaughter somebody, that seems like it would be worse than if you just murdered them. If you murder, it's not a real family-friendly topic. I apologize. Some of the kids are crying on there. I'm so, so, Sorry. Oof, the Normans, I see, I see you kids. Sorry about that, guys. Kleenex, Kleenex. Oh, my bad. Okay, get off the, 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 the bad news. Okay, so here's the thing that happened. My birthday was a couple of weeks ago. True story. Yeah, don't celebrate me over here. The whole audience is like, who cares? Oh, really? Yeah, my birthday was a couple of weeks. Thank you. That's my daughter up there. Thanks, appreciate it. So I'm not making this up. My greatest and favorite gift that I got this year, by far, was I got a card in the mail from a family member. I won't say who she is. She's probably watching, which will be even funnier. Um, she sent me a face mask. She sent me a face mask, and it's this one right here. And on it, it has menorahs. It has the Star of David, which is all fine stuff. It's what we call a Jewish mask. <laughs> right? And you know what happens is, this happens to me quite a bit. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It happens to me quite a bit. People think Chris Roop. He's a pastor, so what are they going to do? They start looking for religious artifacts, religious gifts. Ooh, he'll like that. It looks like it has the Star of David on it and some other weird stuff that Jesus people like. I'm not Jewish, not that I have a problem with the Jews. Uh, but this is not a Christian one. If I was going to get one, it probably won't have the cross and some other Jesus things on it, maybe. So she sends me this one, uh, no joke. And this is the, the story of my life. People always want to end up sending me religious stuff for my birthday or as gifts. They send me crosses. They send me religious t-shirts, these Christian t-shirts. Have you seen these? Please, on behalf of all of us pastors, let me just tell you, we all think it's weird. We join the rest of the world. Your Christian t-shirts are weird. Just keep them to yourself. And you say, well, Chris, you can just re-gift it. No, I don't want to give it to another person and have to see it because it's embarrassing. Jesus wouldn't even wear that shirt that you keep sending to me. I don't want it. And then here's the weirdest thing that people do to me. This is true. I'm not making this up. I had a person whose uh, grandmother passed away and they gave me the grandmother's Bible. So he's a pastor. He must want a Bible. And so people will give me Bibles, right? And I'm like, how many Bibles do I need? I mean, I don't wake up in the morning and go, whew. I want to read God's Word today. I'm, which Bible should I pick? The big red one? The little white one over here? I only need one Bible. I really don't want your Bible. I didn't even know what to tell him. I didn't want the Bible. I was like, well, keep your Bible. But I couldn't say that. It was his grandmother's. It was special to him. So I threw it away. I'm not going to lie to you. I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. I, I feel bad about that. I do. And people, you know... <laughs> I got so many thoughts on this stuff. I'm, I'm trying to help us pastors out. Listen to me. Just listen to me, friends. 
If you, this is, I'm going to talk, speak right now for every pastor, every missionary, every minister on the planet. If you're having a dinner or a get together or a party or a family reunion or whatever, and happens to be one of these guys in the room, don't feel like you have to ask them to say the Lord's blessing over the food. You know, they're not specially qualified to pray. You know? There's no real gift required. You don't have to go to school for it. How about you pray over your own gum meal? Because we're tired of it. We're tired of praying over every meal. That's a lot of praying going on is all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Stop asking us.